you feel a little ticked off at the person you're cooking with, a skillet is always great for knocking oh, them out. You're just feeling inspired by Rapunzel. When do you not feel ins inspired by Rapunzel? This is quite heavy, actually. Hi, everyone. And welcome back to more mysterious recipes with me and her. And I'm starving today. I have not eaten yet today, and honestly, this is probably not a good recipe to start the day with because we're going to be here for like four hours straight. Um, so I will be eating a snack in between now and the, by the time we finish. But um, I am so hungry and this sounds so good. And we're going to go today with a requested recipe from a previous video Wait. down in the comments. Stop. We have to remember who it's from. Uh, today we're doing a requested recipe. On the side of your cutout. Oh, okay. By Julia Day 6353. And she requested the cassoulet. cassoulet from Danger by Design that you can get at the cafe. It sounds so good. Honestly, I like dry beans done any which way anyway. Yeah. So this sounds extra good. So we didn't just pick that one because it sounded delicious. We actually have a little jar with little recommendations kind of strips. So we um, drew a random recipe one. out of the jar, but we were very happy with the pick. <laughs> So last night we got our pound of beans soaking mm -hmm. in five cups of water with we three have, tablespoons we're of salt. We're using um, Great Northern beans today. Ideally, you would use either Great Northern beans or cannellini beans, but we could not find dry cannellini beans. Yes. So northern beans, in this case, you're going to want a little bit of a larger white bean. So we use three tablespoons of kosher salt. That's a larger salt. It's a coarser salt. It's not going to absorb into the beans as much. If you're not using kosher salt, you're using regular. Then cut that down in half, use a tablespoon and a half. So we've let this soak overnight, and as soon as we're ready to use them, we're going to drain those and rinse them. But first, we're going to get our meats going. So we've got a few different meats for this today. We have some nice, lovely, traditionally, we would use more duck legs. Duck is hard to find outside of around Christmas time here. And it's also more expensive when we do find it. And we also didn't want to wait till Christmas. <laughs> so we're using chicken legs, but we're gonna be using duck fat to cook that with to give a little bit of that ducky flavor. If you cannot find duck fat near you, you can still have a really delicious meal without using duck fat. But if you can find it, it's gonna help give a little bit more of that traditional flavor without having to buy duck. So first thing, we're gonna get our meats going for browning. We're gonna take a couple of tablespoons of this and we're gonna be starting off with, we've got a cast iron skillet we're gonna be using this so we can do everything on the stove and just move the whole pan to the oven. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, if you have anything that you can use that is an oven safe skillet, use that. If you don't, that's fine. Just use a skillet to brown all your things and then transfer it to an oven safe dish when you're ready. This is what we have, so this is what we're using. The first thing, we're gonna get our skillet heating over the stove over high heat with a couple tablespoons of duck fat. Again, if you don't have this, that's okay. We're gonna be using some fatty cuts of meat, so just leave the fat out altogether. Or you can use lard. Lard is the best substitute for duck fat. Yes, but you're not gonna need much. I would do maybe a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half in that case. This we're mainly using to add the flavor. And we don't have it properly printed up today. We're kind of going very heavily off of a recipe that we found online. We'll include the link below, but we might end up tweaking the amounts and the instructions a little bit. First things that we're gonna do, now that we have our fat heating over the stove, is we've got, you're gonna want a nice semi-fatty cut of pork. Um, we had some pork butt left over from another recipe we were making. It's nice and fatty, cut in large cubes. So that's what we're gonna use today. You can use pork shoulder, pork belly, but I really like pork butt for the amount of fat to me that it has. It gets that nice little tender, crispy, fatty, juicy. It's gonna work really well for this. You're gonna need hmm, a batter cup or so. This isn't salted, so it's, it's okay if you put a little bit extra just if you want some extra meat at the end. And then we have some salted pork fat bat. So we've got the salted pork to add a little bit more of that fattiness. Kind of like, you know how in baked beans you always have that really fatty chunk of 
pork fat or really fatty meat in there. That's kind of what this is gonna do here. It's gonna add some more of that really good flavor. But we're gonna leave this in pretty big pieces so that we're not just eating straight up chunks of fat at the end, although it is delicious, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna eat some of it as it is. But this is definitely like very heavily salted, so we're just gonna rinse a little bit of the salt off. We're gonna want about a cup of this and then about a cup of our pork. And we're just gonna throw those in our heated pan. I'm just gonna rinse off some salt off of about a cup's worth oh, of this right now. That is so good. So while our pork is cooking, we're gonna let that go for about eight or nine minutes. So it really starts to cook that fat out into grease in the pan. And we're gonna leave our chicken legs whole. We've already got our sausage cut into lengths here. So honestly, we can go ahead and start prepping our veggies. We're gonna do a few different veggies in this, but based on the photo that we're using from the game, we don't want a lot of visible veggie left at the end. So what we're gonna do is we still want that flavor in there. And we're using onion, carrot, celery, all that good stuff, and garlic. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some of it up really fine, like mince that up pretty small. But we're also gonna leave about half of it cut into large chunks so that we can pull it out afterwards. Once it's cooked all that flavor in there, but we don't want to leave a huge amount of visible veggie in the end when we're done, okay? If that makes sense? So for cassoulet, reading up on it, we haven't had it before, it looks divine. One of the primary components seems to be it having this nice crust that kind of helps seal in the liquid and the flavors and all while it cooks in the oven to finish off. And in order to really achieve that, we're going to be following a recommendation from the recipe that we were very heavily basing this off of. And we're going to be adding some unflavored gelatin to help kind of add that thickness to help form that crust. So what we're gonna do while our other things are going, we're gonna take four cups of chicken broth. Keep in mind, since we are using some things that have a lot of salt in them at this point, we don't wanna use something that adds even more salt. So if you have unsalted, that's great. If you don't, just try to find some low sodium chicken broth. And we're gonna take four cups of this, to set that aside. And then we're gonna take about a half cup of this unflavored gelatin and sprinkle that over the chicken broth so it has time to start absorbing and softening. And then we've got one large onion. We're gonna mince the entire onion. started to brown we're gonna go ahead and pull that out of the pan we're gonna leave the pan on the stove on high and we're gonna start cooking our chicken legs in there and we're gonna cook those until they've got a little bit of sear on those as well we've got enough room in the pan if you don't have a super large pan, you can wait and cook the sausage separately. We've got space, let's go ahead and throw it in. We're doing about a pound of sausage length. So while our chicken is browning in the pan, we're gonna go ahead and finish cutting up our celery and our carrots.
the carrot, we're either going to use one large or two medium small. We didn't have a large, so we're using two smaller ones today. And then we're going to take a whole head of garlic and we're just going to take the skin off of that. If you have a large head of garlic, just one, if you have small ones like this, you can't overdo it on the garlic. You can use two. For the garlic, you don't have to worry about cutting that up or mincing it. By the time we finish cooking it, it'll have gotten nice and soft and cooked all the flavor out into the beans. So all we're doing is just pulling the skin off. All right, so the chicken and sausage is getting nice here on it. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. And we're gonna add our onions to the pan and cook that for a few minutes until they start to cook down. If you have more than a few tablespoons of grease in your pan, when you pull all the meat out, go ahead and drain some of that off, but it doesn't look like a huge amount left. Half of it honestly spattered out onto the floor and counter. So we're just gonna leave the amount of grease that's in there for the onions. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take our beans. Since we soaked them with salt, we're gonna drain them and then we're gonna rinse them off pretty well. I can genuinely say those onions smell incredible. You don't have to take our word for it though. Try getting to this stage. Lean over the pan, take a good sniff, you'll understand. But it's time to start putting our ingredients together. So our onions have been cooking for a few minutes now. We're gonna take our beans, throw those in our pan, along with the broth, along with our cut up veggies. And then we're gonna also add several stalks of fresh parsley, a couple of stalks of fresh thyme, a stalk of fresh rosemary. Um, this combination is honestly up to you. You can use just parsley or you can use all those and then we're also going to put two bay leaves. I'm just going to throw this all together. And about five or six whole cloves, or if you don't have whole cloves, you can put a pinch of clove, but just go very light on that, just so. So we're going to put all our veggies and herbs, our beans, and our broth together in the pan with our onions now. Our beans have started to simmer, so we're going to cut that heat back to low and just let that cook for another 20 minutes or so. Let the beans soften up a little bit more before we move it to the oven. And at this point, if you haven't already preheated your oven, go ahead and get that preheating to about 325. So we'll be back in 20 minutes. So our beans have been going for about 20 minutes. We're going to take out those large chunks of carrot and celery and the herbs and, the herbs and set those aside, but we're going to leave the garlic. Now that we 
have the veggies out, we're gonna add all of the meat except for the chicken to our skillet. Since we're not gonna add the chicken for a little while, we'll just put that in the fridge while we wait. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this whole skillet with the beans and the diced vegetables and the meats to the oven and we're gonna let that cook for about 45 minutes and then we're gonna take it out to just move on. Okay, so our 45 minute timer just went off and all we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna pull the pan out of the oven and add that remaining one cup of chicken broth that we didn't put earlier. And we're just gonna kind of gently pour it in there so we can try to not disturb the crust that is starting to form on the top. We're just gonna try to gently pour that in and not be overly rough with that. We're gonna let that go for another 45 minutes. 45 minutes and at that point we can add our chicken to it and cook it until the chickens cook through. But for now we're gonna go eat snacks and be lazy for 45 minutes and then see y'all when the timer goes off. So our second timer has gone off so we're going to take it out of the oven and, and we're going to try to fit our chicken legs our chicken in if we can in. without it overflowing. Now we're supposed to put it back in the oven and then for another hour and a half total and every 30 minutes, going off the recipe we're basing this up, every 30 minutes they want you to take it out and just break up the crust a little bit so it can form a thicker crust. Crust. Crushed. Crushed. It is finally finished and we are dying to try it. Ooh. If you hear any little uh, chatter or if we're babysitting, Nisla is here, so uh, oh. and if you see the camera bumbling, it's her. So you can just ignore that. Time to see if the four plus hours of cook time was worth it and I'm pretty sure it will be. She said she wants some more. I don't know if it's the fat back that give it that flavor or the duck fat or I guess the combination of both, but it also has uh, the knee slits seal of approval. Yes. She said it's very good. And honestly, the extra gelatin in there, I like it. It helped give it a little bit more mm. thickness to it. I like right, helping everything stick together more. Would you have ordered this at the... I would have and I would not have been disappointed when I got it. I know I'm burning my mouth, but it's worth it. It's so good. It's so flavorful. I want to see how the chicken came out. It's good. It's like really soft. Mm-hmm. Like everything is just full of flavor. Yeah. Everything's soft. It definitely has like that fattiness from it from uh -huh. all of the different meats and the gelatin and the duck fat. But it's good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Let's see how the pork butt came out. Scare you scared, you scared a bug? You scared a bug? Good job. Good work. No bug. No bug. Mm. That was super tender too. Mm. Uh -oh. And the pork butt has more of the porky flavor. Mm -hmm. Like the sausage is good, but the sausage definitely cooked out a lot of its flavor into the other food. Okay, I had a little bit of crust in that bit there. So I was going to form as much crust as I thought it was going to, but I just got a little bit there and it's just like a really nice, very light bit of crispiness. Let me try it. Crispy a crust right here. There you go. Oh yeah, let me get some crust just on its own. But that little bit of crispiness oh! was very nice. It's 
pocket of garlic like here's a clove here definitely leaving the garlic in was a good move because getting those chunks of it this would be an amazing winter dish like it's fatty yeah. and warm and yeah hearty but the beans are just the right level of cooked here they're not mushy but they're cooked all the way through they're perfectly done mm -hmm. definitely my compliments to the original recipe that <laughs> we're very heavily banking off of now but I am glad that we added that extra rosemary and thyme and all yes the clove, I don't taste the clove at all. I would say you could add more or else leave it out altogether. Mm -hmm. Because the amount that we put, I really don't taste it. The only that. thing that would make this better was like some sourdough bread on the side to sop all the juices Ooh, up with. Oh, yeah, it would be so and good. And I mean, honestly, if you're gonna spend four hours to make this recipe, you anyway, pretty much have time to make a sourdough loaf. <laughs> yeah, bread of some sort, fresh bread, even if you just made some biscuits, some sort of fresh bread. I don't think you could overdo the garlic. That's in this so dish. good. Yeah, and the whole cloves of garlic is phenomenal. Yes, Mia. What is and it? I found a little piece of that salted pork fat back. Let's see how that came out. It makes you so thirsty. Oh, I got some of the fat back in the crust, and it was just so mm -hmm. buttery. Yeah. But fat back definitely got very rich. It's making me very thirsty. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so definitely use either unsalted or low salt chicken broth in this. Boys. But at this point, it's getting a little bit hard to keep talking with the background noise. The pets are getting riled. There are currently three dogs and three cats in the house, along with a two year old niece. So, <laughs> for now, we're going to let you go. Excellent suggestion. Very good. Yes. Um, definitely feel free to post any more requests or recommendations yes, down at the do. bottom. Um, next, our next recipe, I'm not sure if we'll do a requested recipe or if we'll do something that we're craving. Kind of remains to be seen, but if we do a requested recipe, we're going to do like we did last time. Put all of them together in a jar, draw one, and go off of that. And we're... This was so good. Definitely excited definitely, to see what our next one is. Definitely worth the time. Mm -hmm. It is. I know it's a long... It, <laughs> it takes a long time, but it's definitely it's an all worth day thing, it. But hey, especially... This is like the perfect winter dish. Like if you're stuck inside one day when you have bad weather and you happen to have some pre-soaked beans and no plans for the day, make this. So bye for now guys. And again, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolute excellent way to spend the day. <laughs> bye. Mystery time. There's a mystery. Oh, it's scary. The sizzling chicken is scary. This is my other son, Pascal. This is Rada Tui. She is our niece. Mm -hmm. She belongs to our other sister. Oh, where did your little toes trying to go? Away. She doesn't like to be on camera or held. So we are feeling very graced with her presence today. She said, let's go over here. You want a kiss or is that scary? You remember our sister on the last video who showed up with a hood covering her face. This is her daughter, like mother, like daughter. They don't like to be on camera. Well, yeah! He would like to rub his whiskers on your fork. You're not gonna let him though, right? Oh, yeah, I would. Oh. And I'd give it to you.